Welcome into episode 8 of the Middle of Nowhere Gaming Podcast, and it is PlayStation 4 release week. Yes. <laughs> All right. Up. Okay, Any today we have uh, the usual me and Brendan. Hello. And I guess we can say Jess, too. Hello, everyone. Oh, she didn't say hi. Good. <laughs> hi. I had to get it up. Okay, see? It didn't matter. We're careful. Um, and I should start off by saying that we have... Uh, a news correspondent from the University Daily Kansan here. So in case there's anything awkward that happens, that's probably why. So whenever we don't want to say anything embarrassing and we're just all quiet, that's probably it. <laughs> um, anything worth mentioning? Did you guys do anything special recently or this weekend or anything? Courtney is participating in No Shave November. <laughs> we'll see how long that that's lasts. That's something worth I've never mentioning. Done that before. Finished Assassin's Creed 1. You did? Still Yay. sucks. So you fought your way through that one? Yeah. It was more of something to do rather than something I wanted to do. Did you play the entire thing this weekend, or? Uh, I played, like, 90% of it. Mm. Yes, that's not too long of a game, I don't think. Especially if you no. don't do all the extra stuff. That's what takes it longer. Like, hunting all the flags. I was going to do that, but then after I finished it, I was tired of it. Yeah, I, I started to get the flags, because uh, I was going to get all the achievements the first time I was playing it. And then I looked up online that were, there was like 600 flags yeah. or something like that, and I was like, never There mind. are like maps online. Yeah, I know, but that's still, you know, hundreds of flags. I don't want to take time to do yeah, that. Especially in the kingdom where it's just like, it's hidden behind this one tree a quarter of the way to the way towards Akre. Whatever. How However, you <laughs> say, how do you pronounce that? I don't know how to pronounce that. That's how I heard them do it, so oh, okay. I'm going to say it like that. It's okay. better than Acre. Acre. Oh, okay, yeah, see? If you said it like that, I would have known what you were talking about. Oh, man. Yeah, just say something like <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> like it's, there's a flag behind the Dome of the Rock in the southeastern point of the city. Mm. Um, I think, I guess the only thing significant I did... Well, I guess I did a few things. I beat Resistance 3, so I have that, so I'll be getting a review up sometime soon, as soon as I write the Heavy Rain review also. Uh, I went to Target Sunday morning, and I got the buy two, get one free PlayStation 4 games. So as everybody probably seen the pictures, I got Killzone, Knack, and Call of Duty Ghost. And then I just picked up Assassin's Creed 4 today for PlayStation 4, so that's awesome. Pretty excited. Um, let's see, we... Currently are at three days left until the PlayStation 4, and so the countdown blog is coming to an end for the PlayStation 4. We should have two blogs go up tomorrow for the PlayStation 4, and two on Thursday as well, um, which I guess tomorrow is today for you listening. But And then we've just started today the Xbox One countdown blog, and so our first one went up today, and it was about uh, Halo grenades, which awesome. is pretty cool. Um, and tomorrow we have one going up. Uh, Jess, you want to give them a, what it's about? It's going to be about the ins and outs of the Xbox One. Um, it's really, I don't know, just to look at the hardware and like what's all going to be in it. It's, uh, it's really informative. So for anybody who doesn't know anything about the Xbox One yet, it, I would check it out. It should already be up or going up soon when you listen to this, if you listen to this right, right away. Uh, also, we have been talking about doing uh, some giveaways soon. And we want our first one to be for getting to 500 likes on Facebook. And we're within, I think, 75 now, something like that. So as soon as we get to that, uh, we're going to hold some kind of a contest on Facebook. Uh, and we're going to give away a poster. It'll probably be Last of Us or Pokemon or what else? Bioshock. There's a few of them. Yeah, they can vote for it. Um, yeah, on there's, the a, there's a poll on Facebook. Um, and then we're also going to give away... Whoever wins, uh, they'll have the choice between uh, three months of Xbox Live Gold or PlayStation Plus. So be on the lookout for that and share our page and everything so that we can get to 500 likes quicker. And then we'll have a cost, uh, con costume a contest, some kind of contest. We don't know yet what it is. So let's move on to the news from nowhere. Yay. Bum, bum, bum. We should have a Yay. jingle. We need a jingle. We need a jingle for that. Brendan, come up with one ba, right now. Ba, ba, ba. You can just no, you can't <laughs> steal a jingle. You, you can't totally steal can. it. No, no. They're, they're not using it well. Yeah, McDonald's doesn't care. They're still making money. So, the <clears> first <throat> news. We have several of them from BlizzCon. Uh, does anybody know how to pronounce that? No, I Blizz tried earlier. No, it not BlizzCon. Oh. I said BlizzCon. Oh. I'm talking about the first one. Draenor? Is that how you pronounce it? I'm going to assume so. All right, then read it off. Uh, World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor Expansion Revealed. Okay. Sends you back in time to fight some of the major battles in Warcraft history. Mm-hmm. Enables you to instantly boost one character to level 90. 
the fully re revamped player character models and animations, and they also raised the level cap to 100. There should be new zones, dungeons, raids, scenarios, battlegrounds, and more. And there's no release date. Aw. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, not surprising. They, they need more expansion packs, especially, especially since uh, the most recent subscription number uh, was down. I mean, I remember a year and a half ago or something, it was like 12 million people yeah. subscribed, and now it's down to like seven and a half. So they've lost a substantial amount of this. Doesn't it usually fluctuate. Though? Yeah, it does. Yeah. After after about a year of of an expansion being out, uh, this one sounds pretty cool. It's much cooler than uh, Mists of Pandaria. Oh, <laughs> I, I saw wasn't that into one. Being a Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> who who doesn't want to be one? Well, a lot of well. people. <laughs> yeah, the people who stopped subscribing got tired of it. Um, the next announcement from BlizzCon was that Heroes of Storm of the Storm was detailed. Uh, it is a, a MOBA game. In, what is that? Multiplayer online battle arena? Does anybody know? I think that's I think what that it is. I think that sounds right. Um, it says that your team, a team of heroes will be able to take on another team and destroy their base. There will be no item purchasing, and uh, there are several other various details, like a ton of little bitty details about this. And you could find it by going to uh, Blizzard's page or something, because it was way too many to... Read them all off. I looked it up. It was a lot of stuff. It was a there. lot. Yeah. Uh, and the next one, Jess? Uh, Diablo 3 PS4 details were revealed. Um, it will be released as a brand new ex expansion pack called Reaper of Souls and will be bundled with the PS4 version of the game. Um, it will use the touchpad and be in 1080p running at 60 FPS. Um, there's a new adventure mode, bounties, random areas, and a randomized dungeon called Nephilim Rifts. It's time to say that. That's I, I've never played Diablo. I know. I hear it's really good. I want to. But play I heard it. it was not great on PlayStation Three. So I guess they're really revamping this one for the PlayStation. Well, I know 4. they um, recently changed it from point um, from point and click to um, you know, being able to move like a regular first person shooter. Oh really? Yeah. On the PS3 one or? I think it was just. On the, it might have been on the PC and PS3. Okay. But I know for sure it's on the PC. I don't know this. It sounds like something I might try to get into, because I'm trying all kinds of new games on the PlayStation 4. I have plans to try different kinds of games that I've never played before, and so this may be one of those. Uh, there's one more announcement. Brendan, you know something about it? Uh, the Hearth Hearthstone open beta detailed. It's a Warcraft-themed trading card game. Beta will begin in December, and the iPhone and Android versions are announced, released in early 2014. Did you say you knew something about this game? I would heard about it. So do you know anything, like... I know it says trading card game, but like, I don't know. Kind of do you... like battling one another, I think. So kind of like, like a Yu-Gi-Oh on the computer or something, or what is yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I don't know. I'm not really into trading card things, so yeah. <laughs> this wouldn't be something I for me. I stopped doing that after Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, say Pokemon cards was my last one, and that was like when I was 10, so. Then you could play the Pokemon video game based on the Pokemon exactly. cards. Exactly. Which are based on the video game. Yeah. Based on the other thing, based on the... Nah, just keep going. Yeah. Anyways, so, next news. Sony has updated their PlayStation Network Terms of Service. And it's getting a lot of attention on the internet from the super nerds, uh, which the update is really undeserved, in my opinion. Uh, the two things that, that people are talking about is, there's a line in it that says, Are we monitoring, are, are we monitoring PSN? Uh, yes, but we can't monitor, monitor all of PSN activity, and we make no commitment to do so. However, we reserve the right in our sole discretion uh, to monitor and record any and all of your PSN activity and to remove any and all of your UGM at our sole discre dic discretion bleh, without further notice to you. So, I mean, any anytime you put up an online service, it's going to be monitored. I think that's pretty obvious, so I don't know why people are freaking out about it. And, like... Why are people? I don't understand. What are you so afraid of having you, what you're doing on there monitored? You know, so you downloaded Call of Duty Ghosts or something, or you talk to your friend online about something. It's not like you know they're spying on you. It's not like the Connect always being online and having a camera on you at all times. <laughs> you know, like the NSA. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think know. it's more of like people just worrying about their privacy being stolen. Yeah, all their credit card stuff. information and yeah. stuff like that. Like the PSN hacked a few years ago. I understand that. It's just, it's just. You know they're they're covering their ass by putting this in there by saying you know we're going to be watching what you do but it's 
like any other thing, Facebook's watching what you're doing. You know, anything online is going to be watching and recording everything you do. But, you know, whatever. The other thing uh, is talking about uh, games. It says the software you buy is licensed, not sold, which means that you acquire the rights to use the software as described in these terms, but you do not acquire ownership of the software. It's basically saying every game you buy, you don't actually own. You're only, you know, you only have a license to it to use it until they say you can't. Well, and people have been dealing with that, like, in Steam for... Yeah. You know. Well, and this is basically the case for uh, for any of the previous consoles as well. They had a similar similar thing in, in their terms of service as well, because it's just, you know, they can't give you the game to go sell and all that stuff. It's it's leaving it up to the, the developers and the producers the production companies to determine whether or not you can sell your game. So like it's saying that Activision could all of a sudden say, you know, we're going to give you a code and that's the only way you can play your game. So you can't sell it. And it's like, if you download a game, you can't sell it back anyways, you have to keep it. And so it's the same thing as downloading a game, but it's just talking about the physical copies, but they're not saying that you can't sell them back. It's just saying that we're holding the right, you know, that you are only licensing it. You're not buying it completely. So it's, it's not a big deal to me again. It's not going to change. It's going to stay the same way as, same way as it has been. Um, all right, Brendan, next one. Uh, the Xbox One launch titles and install size were revealed. All of them are between 246 megabytes and 43 gigabytes. That doesn't that doesn't surprise me. It's huge. 43 gigs is a little huge. <laughs> yeah, but like the entire list of next gen games. Did you see all the install sizes? Yeah. Freaking all of them are over 30 gigs. That's like all the big games. Crazy. There's little ones, but I mean, those are like insignificant PSN titles and stuff like that. So that's like that 246 megabytes one. That's just a little bitty downloadable title. So, but um, yeah, go on with it. Sorry. This is not referred to digital downloads. These are required installs for all Xbox One games. Some games can be played midway through the installation, which, you know, I liked. Yeah, well, yeah, and installs aren't, they don't take very long. Downloads do, but installs don't. Um, so It's always been annoying, like, on Xbox Live, whenever I download a game, it'll just be, if it's a large game, it'll take a bit, but even if I try to go play a different game, it'll automatically stop the download. Mm, yeah. So you have to just wait it out if you ever want to play something. Well, I'm one of the people who... I, I install my game on my hard drive before I play it anyways because I want my game to run smooth. You know, I don't want to wait an, an, a minute per loading screen. You know, I don't want it to skip all the time or I don't want it to freeze. And I just feel like installing it makes it run way quicker. Uh, it doesn't freeze. It doesn't do all that stuff. And so I've been doing that for years. So I'm, I'm used to waiting, you know, 10, 15 minutes every time I get a new game to put it in. So it's no, it's no big deal to me. But – and – and Xbox, or not Xbox, I believe PlayStation 4 also has the same requirement, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, I mean, <clears> games like, I don't know, I think it's Call of Duty. No, it's Killzone, I think it's Killzone. Let's see, I got both Call of Duty and Killzone over here for PlayStation 4. Uh, PlayStation 4's Killzone is uh, 45 gigabytes, and oh. Call of Duty is 49 gigabytes. Oh. So those are huge. and But that'll only take, like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. It's not going to take too long. It kind of makes sense that the um, next-gen consoles then have 500 gigs exactly. of, of hard drive. Which, I mean, you think that you get, like, 10 of those games, and it's going to take up the entire hard drive, but you, you also got to consider that you're not going to be playing 10 games at once. Yeah. You know, you can delete the install, and it won't delete any of your save data, and then you can come back, and, like, in six months, whenever you want to play Call of Duty again, all you got to do is install it again, and then it's back on it. And so. a good game will, like, offer, like, um, like 30 hours, like, minimum. Mm -hmm. Like, at least for one of the AAA titles. Yeah. And also, like, with the Xbox One, I don't know about the PlayStation 4, but the Xbox One, you can um, attach external... Storage oh yeah, yeah, yeah. extra extra storage. Yeah, so like, yeah, and, yeah, and the PlayStation Four you can put in uh, internal hard drives as well. Yeah. So just not not hard, not external. They can do internal, which is basically opposite of another, Xbox. Yeah. Um, Activision has confirmed that there's a new Call of Duty and Skylander game coming out in 2014. Yeah, new, really? Call, new Call, Call of Duty. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. I had no idea that was coming. <laughs> Man, I, mean, I was on edge, wondering whether there's going to be one next year. Yeah, so was <laughs> I. You just never know with that Call of Duty series. Hmm. So, what do you think it'll be called? Black Ops Three or? That's I don't know. Then it'll be um, Black Ops Three Modern Warfare 
to Ghost Dogs. <laughs> Ghost Dogs. <laughs> Silver Edition. Silver Edition. There you go. I think I don't know. Uh, I don't think it'll be Black Ops Three. I mean, well, I guess they did do Modern Warfare Three, didn't they? They did, yeah. Modern oh Warfare man, 4, didn't maybe they? they'll start a new. See, I'm hoping they start a new one because, like, Ghost, that's new. They, they've got to do. I don't. I just hate when an already repetitive series keeps coming out with more repetitiveness. You yeah. know, it's like just if you're gonna go back and forth every year, at least make new ones. Don't continue the same ones. I don't know. It's just they're burning me out on the franchise. I know I did buy Ghosts, but it's because it is brand new. It's not the Modern Warfare I've been playing for six years. It's not Black Ops that I've been playing for three years. It's something new to try. But uh, the next one, I'm going to read the next two, actually, because these are really important to me. Uh, Kingdoms of Amalur. The auction for the the title has been moved to December. Uh, This is a 38 Studios title that came out, I think, last year. And it was really, uh, really good, in my opinion. I loved the game. It's a like a Skyrim-type game. But uh, their their studio closed, and so they're trying to sell off the assets to the game. And at first it didn't look like there were very many people interested in it, which was really sad because it was supposed to be partly a, part of a trilogy, I believe. And uh, recently people have been really, really into it or whatever, and so... Uh, they're moving back to auction to allow more people to come in and get into it, and they're, then they're going to sell it off next month, which is really exciting because I hope it gets picked up by a good studio and and then they can make the sequel because that game was so much fun. It's so much fun. It's really good. It's, it's one of the few... Well, I say few, but there's actually a lot of games over here. But one of the few games I will actually buy, or I did actually buy, because I plan to play it again. I've beaten it twice already, but I will play it again. I'll have to play it. Um, the next one... Is the PlayStation 4 will come with three promotional gifts. Uh, I put a blog up about this last week, I believe. And so every PlayStation 4 that you get uh, within the, I, at least the first week, I know I think it'll go on longer, but within the first um, week you will get 30 days of PlayStation Plus, uh, 30 days of free music unlimited service, and $10 in your PlayStation Network wallet for the PlayStation Store. That's awesome. That's really cool. You know, give them a give them a little idea of what the online service is going to be like. Uh, give them ten dollars to be able to spend money in, on a downloadable game or whatever, uh, and then have free music as well. And then the thirty days of uh, PlayStation Plus also allows you to get free games, and so you'll be able to get Contrast and um, oh man, what's uh, what's it? Resogun uh, for free the first day. So day one, you'll be able to go home. Uh, download the update and everything, and then you'll be able to download two free games, even if you didn't buy another game. So that's cool. Jess, what's the next one? Xbox One needs mandatory day one update to do anything. Uh, Just like the PS4, you need the update in order to do anything. Even disc-based games won't work until the patch is installed and it's 300 megabytes. That's not a big deal. No big deal. I mean, 300 megabytes is five minutes, so that's all you got to do. Download it and install it really quick. It's less than five minutes, but I'm, I'm just saying... If you have a slow internet, it'll take a little bit. This is only a big deal for people who don't have internet yeah. or who have an, an internet fail that night or something. You know That would suck because uh, then they wouldn't be able to play it at midnight. But it shouldn't be that big of a deal for the rest of us because what you got to think about is the people who are getting these consoles on day one are the hardcore gamers. Yeah. They're the people who have the internet to play games like this or to download install patches. And so I don't know why people are freaking out about this kind of thing. It's you're going to have it. So why are you freaking out for people who don't have it? You know, they, they probably aren't lying to get the game anyway. So right, get the console, yeah, yeah. but that's my opinion. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes a little bit of sense. Cause like Xbox and Microsoft, they like advertise that, you know, you can play any game anytime without internet. For yeah. the Xbox One, so I guess that's like a whatever. Well, that's that's this whole patch is because they're they're covering their ass because they told they did the DMR thing at the beginning of the year and said that you have to always be online and you DRM. have to always DRM. Sorry, DMR's a gun. Yeah, it's <laughs> gun. What's that in Halo? Yep, that's what I thought. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> they're covering their ass. It's it's Microsoft now. Next one, Brendan. Okay. Microsoft details Xbox Live media achievements. That sounds this so one cool. makes me excited. <laughs> the Xbox One is empowering partners to bring media achievements, offering everybody the opportunity to achieve badges or awards for the media they consume in addition to gaming. Things like watch 10 titles before the end of 2013 on Amazon Video. 
will yeah. not impact your overall gamer score, em, gamer score and, applica- and it'll use applications like Netflix, Hulu Plus, Crackle, Amazon Instant Video, and Redbox Instant. Um, we had a question uh, about this, this, spe- this specific thing, and it's from Dennis on Facebook, and he said, what do you guys think of the new Xbox One achievement system for watching media on the Xbox One? I think it's kind of cool. It makes me really <laughs> yeah. excited because, like, in my dorm room right now, I have an Xbox 360, and literally nobody else in my room knows how to use it. So all they, like, do is they're like, Jessica, I want to watch Netflix, all right? Okay, go, set up Netflix. But they watch, it's, like, on 24-7, like, I can't handle it. So that means that I'll get achievements for them watching, you At know, least Netflix affect on your my Xbox. Yeah, score. see, that's, the problem I would have had is if it affected your gamer score, because... I have friends who only watch Netflix, and I don't want their gamer score to be higher than mine because they freaking watch, <laughs> yeah. you know, One Tree Hill and stuff on Netflix. It's like, yeah. I play games all the time. You know, these achievements are sacred. I don't want them to be changed. And so, but it is cool. I like the idea that this is going to be there. And uh, I hope that they have, like, this whole separate, you know, section, you know, like, uh, game gamer score and media gamer score, or something where you could check out, you know, each of them and see yeah. who's the who wastes the most time on Netflix <laughs> and stuff. And and it's cool also because uh, these media achievements are time based. And so like the one he mentioned, the ten titles before the end of twenty thirteen, it's you know it'll have you know you have this many weeks left until you you have to watch it or whatever, or until you can get this achievement. And so you can miss out on stuff like that. You don't you're not going to get every achievement. I don't know. It's cool. It's an interesting idea. It's a cool spin on using media. Definitely. More intangible rewards. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> we like those this, this day and I age. like some of them, but I don't. It's not, if sometimes I feel like if I got an achievement for watching a lot of Netflix, I'd just become depressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Interesting. Uh, next news Ken Levine, or Levine. I think it's Levine. I think. Adam Levine from... Uh, well, yeah, and spelled the same, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, spelled okay. the exact same. Uh, def- he's defending Bioshock Infinite's downloadable content link. Uh, it's, they say that you can beat it in two hours and you can experience everything in three hours. Uh, people have been complaining that that's not long enough for the $15 price tag. Uh, and he says that uh, we have this new engine, so we should take advantage of it. And hey, let's make all the shops and build 3D scenes out of out of the window, which we never had in Bioshock 1. Sorry, I can't read. Let's put people in the world and make it all huge and shiny and build everything fresh, or almost everything fresh. Oh, so yeah, we got carried away a little bit. I won't deny it, but hey, I don't want to work on something that I feel is kind of B in quality. You might as well go for it. The company is okay with it, so why the hell not? I totally agree. If you want to make just like the most beautiful downloadable content and make it you know, only three hours long, that's awesome. So... Well, yeah. I don't care. It's only three hours. Um, I you looked. Know, you don't have to buy it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or you could get the freaking season pass. The season pass is twenty dollars, I, I believe, and you get episode one, and you get episode two, and you get the multiplayer stuff. So it's like you can get all that extra stuff for only five dollars more. If it's twenty dollars, I'm right. <laughs> if I'm wrong, <laughs> then I'm sorry. It's awesome if they're making a new engine because you know the next one will just even be that much cooler. Yeah. I looked some stuff up about the DLC content, and it sounds really cool. Like, especially for the people who are complaining about Bioshock Infinite being so much different than Bioshock One and Two. Yeah, because it's back in Rapture. Yeah, and so uh, that's what I keep hearing is that it's the best of both worlds. It's yeah. that you have the characters from from Infinite, and you put them back in Rapture, and and then the fact that in Episode Two, you get to be Elizabeth. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> that is going to be awesome. So Elizabeth is awesome, no matter what unnamed people say so when you're playing as her will you just like randomly like see big things on the ground it's like oh who right. do i give this to yeah i was gonna say are you gonna are you talking about the guns and stuff here yes. take this the ammo <laughs> here yeah. Sir, money yeah okay yeah that would suck <laughs> your, your entire the entire episode is you picking stuff up and throwing it it's oh, like every man. time a fight breaks out you're like where can i hide mm. um jess what's next walmart black friday ads leaked Yay. Go. Okay, so I have a list of stuff up here. We're looking at it on Is the computer. $99? Yeah, Are a new Xbox me? 360 you can get for $99. Oh. Um, a PlayStation 3 with The Last of Us and uh, Batman Arkham Origins is 199 and it's got like a 250 gig hard drive, I believe. And then another PS3 for 150 and it's got a... 12 gig hard drive or 16 gig. I imagine that the Xbox One on that ad is like not 
will they even have any? Um, the Xbox they One? Uh, I know they don't, I don't have know. any now. It depends on how many they ship. Uh, Games-wise, there are several games. A lot of games you can get for cheap. Um, Call of Duty will be $40. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, the new NBA game, new Batman, and new Assassin's Creed will all be $35. So that's cool. And then a lot, lot, a lot, lot of cheaper games. So uh, you could find that anywhere online. Just, just search this year in Walmart Black Friday ads. It doesn't sound nearly as good as GameStops that we oh, read off few, no. a few episodes ago. GameStop sounds a lot cooler, but it's also a smaller store, so it'll be harder to get stuff. Yeah. But yeah. So uh, the next news is that Amazon is opening up a PlayStation Network storefront. Uh, it's gonna. It's online now. It offers both games and things like downloadable content. Uh, they're made available as digital codes, which can be redeemed on the appropriate system with PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and Vita, even though I wrote PlayStation 3 twice. That's weird. <laughs> You're really enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation 3, dang it. Um, so the big thing about this is the fact that they can sell games on PlayStation Network through this uh, cheaper than Sony can. So, like... Uh, example that IGN gave was that Splinter Cell Blacklist is fifty nine ninety nine on PlayStation Network, but it's fifty dollars and thirty nine cents on Amazon. So you can get discounts on games, and they'll do discounts more often than they will on PlayStation Network. So that's kind of cool. It's one way for them to get to sell more games, you know, and to get discounts, and that they don't have to, you know, like when Sony. We talked about this before, I believe. When Sony uh, lowers a price on a downloadable game that undercuts GameStop selling it and things like that for their physical copies and they don't want to they don't want to ruin the relationship. And so this is this is really cool that Amazon's just going out there and being like, you know what, screw everybody. We're gonna sell the games for cheaper and we're gonna sell more than all of you. So they're gonna make a lot of money out of this. Different than uh, Microsoft screw you to GameStop. Microsoft's what do they do? You know the DRM thing. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I should have got that one right away. I feel bad now. They're a DMR problem. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, Brandon, what's the next one? Uh, Rayman Legends will be coming to PS4 and Xbox One in, one in February 2014. Did you guys play Rayman, Rayman at all? I no. saw it. You saw um, it? Rayman Legends. <laughs> okay. I played like some of the older Rayman. Okay, Legends. see, that's what I'm talking about. Did you play any of them? Oh. Did you? Yeah. I didn't either. Is um, it good? Uh, yeah. It was the one where you basically are captured and you get to improve your room with swag the further you get in the game. Are we talking about Rayman Raving Rabbits or Raging Rabbits? Okay. I don't know. Sorry, I've never played oh, okay, it. Okay, so. never mind. Yeah. Is it, well, I'm just asking, you know, is it fun? Is it good? Yeah, it was actually really fun. What kind of game is it? Um, that one, it was more of like um, kind of like single player Mario Party where there are certain like games you play. Okay. Uh, but the Rayman Raving um, uh, Legends one, I think it's um, kind of like a side scroller. Okay. Don't let it be awkward. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> Keep talking, man. Yeah, it's it's kind of like it's just two D and you go and like. Well, I knew. Save. Okay, so it's a platform game. So yeah. Yes. Platform game by Ubisoft. I knew. I've seen the the commercials about it or whatever. It's just it's never appealed to me. Yeah. But it is cool that it's coming to next gen consoles. Yeah. So, Rayman's hitting it up. Uh, Jess, what's the last news? PSN trophy rarity added. When you earn a trophy, you will be able to see how rare it is. Shows the percentage of pl other players with it. Uh, this is copying like uh, PSNprofiles.com. It's uh, if you attach your account to it, uh, you can update it and it'll update all of your trophies to it. And whoever else is also a part of this website, uh, and they do it at the same time, so you can see like uh, how rare each one of your trophies are. So like. It has different, like, very rare, rare, you know, medium. What, I don't remember it's all gonna the It's going to be like things. Pokemon Marbles all over again. I don't get that reference again. Uh, never mind. <laughs> always <laughs> there, were, there were marbles with Pokemon on them, and sometimes you got a rare Pokemon on one of them. Oh, okay. And you shot them at each other. Um, anyways. I love having you on the team, Brendan. <laughs> you contribute <laughs> so much unknown knowledge. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I, I yeah, I use uh, PSN profiles and and you could just you could see how many people get your trophies and stuff like that. So like uh, games that nobody play, you have a lot of rare trophies and stuff, and so it just makes you look like you're you're a badass. You're like oh, I have a trophy that only point zero one percent people have, you know. And so like Star Ocean: The Last Hope, not very many people played that game on PlayStation Three, <laughs> so I have a lot of very rare trophies oh, on there. It's kind of like going to be like the new Mile High Club achievement for. Um... Modern Warfare. Mm, yeah, exactly, and and also it it uh, it updates, and so like 
Uh, if you get a trophy on day one or whatever, it could say very rare at the beginning, and then in a month or two, it could become a common trophy because everybody has it now. So it's not like you got a very rare, tro- very rare trophy and then it's going to stay very rare for the rest of your life. So we do have time to get disappointed. <laughs> All right, let's uh, wrap that up and move into our topic of the week or topics of the week. Who wants to start? Brendan, go first. Go. Brendan, go first. Episodic gaming. What do you guys think of it? Oh, I don't know. I go back and forth. Yeah, I think you should explain episodic gaming. Uh, episodic gaming, it's um, well, probably the would be the new um, Walking Dead game, where you don't buy the full game, but it releases itself in episodes every few weeks. Um, the advantage of which being to a few weeks to a few months, yeah, depends on what game. Um, the advantage being it's a bit cheaper um, each single game, and it's kind of cheaper for the developer. Yeah. Um. Okay, so. Uh, another way to explain it is that they're, they're, these episode ga- episodic games are typically shorter as well. So it, it may be cheaper, but normally when you get all the episodes together, it's like 10 to 15 hours long still. So it's, you know, depending on what kind of game you're playing, it's not going to change it a lot. Because, like, Assassin's Creed did epi- episodic downloadable content last year, and, and that was cool, but it wasn't very long. Uh, but you didn't have to pay very much for it. And then uh, The Walking Dead... Also, and those are like two to three hour episodes, and so it wasn't very long because there was five of them. Um, and then now, what's the new game? Uh, the Fables one is that, is that what it's? No, it's not called Fables. That's what it's based off of. Wolf Among Us. That oh, one. Okay. That one. That one's coming out now. So. Is I don't it? Know. Does the Walking Dead one like correspond with the TV show or? Uh, um, it has tie-ins. Okay. Like um, both the graphic novel, the game, and the TV show, usually have. Um, like similar characters or characters um, that appear that are the same, but usually they play a different role in it. Or like yeah. they'll kill off one while the um, while in like the TV show, it'll he'll last for like another <coughs> season or something. And they have uh, similar settings as well, and or they mention them because like uh, in ep- the first season of the Walking Dead game, they were in uh, was it Macon? Is I that where it was? It. Oh, you didn't play it. Well, it was, I think it was Macon. Uh, anyways, and that wasn't mentioned at all in the show until like two weeks ago. And now all of a sudden we're in a season four or whatever of the show, and they mentioned it just briefly. And I was just like, oh my god, I played that in the game. It was like, they, they, they're they connecting it finally. And so that was cool. <laughs> Clementine has yet to make an appearance. Clementine? What do you mean? She's going to be the main character. I mean in the TV oh, show. Oh, in the TV show. Yep. Okay, sorry, yeah. It's like, yeah, unless, I don't think she'll make it unless one of the ki- unless one of the pigs was named Clementine. Oh, that would suck. She already died. <laughs> I, I think it's fun episodic gaming. Um, my problem is is that the wait. Uh, yeah. I don't like waiting that long. Yeah. Plus, like sometimes it might end up being more expensive of the long run if you buy every single one for like. Yeah, instead of the season pass. Yeah. Because like I don't know what was. The Walking Dead was $5 an episode and $20 for the season pass. So there were five episodes. It would have been 25 if you bought them individually. So that kind of sucks. I bought them after they had all released. That's what I said all along was I'm not going to play them you know, once every few months. That would suck. Because I didn't want to be left off uh, with a, a cliffhanger and then forget where I was in three months whenever the next episode came out or whatever it was. And so I waited, and then I played them all back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> and yeah uh it was fun i i really enjoyed it but that that's probably the only way i'll play any of these games have you played any it's your question no i ha- um no i haven't i've um i usually just like to buy retail games just because i like to play everything at once mm-hmm. this is like you said um if i have to if i stop a game for a few months, I'll usually have to play the game again because I'll forget exactly. about the story. Yeah. It, my problem is I don't like the I don't want to waste my time playing back through it. Whenever it comes out, I'm like I want to play it now, you know. And so I don't know, and I don't prepare very well like that, so I wouldn't be able to play it the day before. I would probably have something come up, and then I'd be like, no, no, I have to play that episode again, and it's already out. Freak out about it. Have you played any episodic games? I don't know, like yeah. see before this this episode, this podcast. I didn't really know what that was. Yeah. Uh, so you guys explaining it? Not really. I mean, I recommend getting The Walking Dead season okay. one. It's fun. I've heard that's really good. It's it's the gameplay is not so much good. The graphics aren't good, but the story is excellent. It's Which really is, good. I think the most important part of the game. Exactly. Same thing, or same reason for me. So 
I, I think they're doing a sell for it, like thirteen dollars or something, which isn't bad. But it, it is, like I said, ten fifteen hour games, not very long. Okay. Whatever, I'd look into it. So, Jess, what's your topic? It's replaying games. Do you replay games? Why not? What are the benefits? What are the not benefits? Do you want to give us your answer? Um, I don't... Like, I used to replay games because I was poor. I still am poor, but, like, I didn't invest too much in games. And so, like, I would replay games when I got bored or when I forgot about them or just... Like, I replayed Assassin's Creed 2 because I wanted to get 100% sync. I got 100% sync, so it took me a while, but I replayed that one ga- that game for that. Um, but now that I've like started to play more games and like buying new games, I don't replay them because I don't have time to. Like I'm trying to play the next game. So, yeah. These are all the games that I have replayed in the past. Well, according that's only like 3 games a year or so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. The entire Assassin's Creed series, Tales of Asperia, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Final Fantasy 13, and 13 2. Uh, you have 13, that's why yeah. it's not in the stack. Uh, Tales of Grace is F, Skyrim, and Kingdoms of Amalur uh, Reckoning. So, I, yeah, I replay games. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I replay the good ones that I really enjoy the stories. So It depends for me. Like, a long game can... It'll be just tiresome, like, I don't want to go through that all again if it's just straight story, but yeah. a game like Skyrim where you, you can go down several paths or where a lot of it is optional, I can replay that. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, I, I am a big, uh, I, I like the story the most in games. I don't really care for, you know, good gameplay or splits in story and stuff like that, because if there's splits in stories, that just annoys me, because I, you know, I like going one way and I don't like not knowing the other way but I don't want to play it that way because I mean, then it like, changes if there's like a main story but you can do side stuff okay yeah that can like go either way like Skyrim yes yeah but you 100 percented did everything in <laughs> no I have I, I'm gonna buy the DLC this break and I'm gonna try oh, to oh yeah you it. didn't get that did you so it'll actually show up as a completed game and I can finally have one. Oh, that'll be nice um so yeah I mean my answer would be that I do replay games, obviously, because of all that. But, uh, um, and I'm not even bringing up the fact that I'm going to replay Bioshock Infinite, Fallout 3, uh, Nino Kuni, uh, Star Ocean, uh, Tales of Exilia, White Knight Chronicles. I'm going to replay a lot of those, it, but only whenever I have time, you know, like in between uh, big releases, Bethesda, which is not now. Uh, Bethesda and Rockstar do great with replayable games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The fact the open world and everything. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But Grand I do it for the story, so I, I don't do it for the, the play playability well, stuff. No, like, I'll do it for the story like on games like uh, Assassin's Creed where I've played most of the games again, twice mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. But I like to be able to like play, find something new a lot of times when I play the game. I, I mean, when I replay the games, it's normally to not only enjoy the story <laughs> again, but it's to like clean up on trophies or achievements or something. It's like, okay, so, you know, I missed all of this stuff, so if I restart the game now, I can focus on trying to get this while I'm playing through and enjoying the story again. And so that's what I'm trying to do is grab more. Because I am a trophy and achievement whore. <laughs> We've brought this up several times. I replay uh, Grand Theft Auto, but it's funny because I don't play it for the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, repl- I just like, put in all the cheats and then <laughs> replay it. That sounds like me when I was, like, 13. So. Put in all the cheats. I get annoyed because I'm playing Grand Theft Auto Five whenever I go home, and I really want to play it for the story, but you have to go through a bunch of, like, side stuff before you can get back to the main story. Yeah, yeah, you do. You definitely do. Let's see. Not a Grand Theft Auto fan anymore, but but when I was, like I said, when I was 13, like, uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, when, I think that came out when I was, like, 13, somewhere, somewhere around there, I would, uh, I replayed that game so many times, and it wasn't the fact that I was replaying it, it was the fact that I was just playing it, because I never even beat it. But I would just constantly play it and not care about the story and just put in all the cheats for like flying cars and unlimited ammo and all this stuff. Yeah. And I would just go crazy in the city and just die over and over and over and just keep coming back and just keep doing that like stuff. Like the chaos mode where all the like pedestrians have weapons and they like, start attacking you and you get hit by a rocket launcher and you die and it's just horrible. My favorite thing bad. was to put in the like, slow-mo code and then to put in <laughs> flying cars and then to like grab like the best car you could get and just take off down the road and try to fly across the ocean and stuff in slow-mo. It was so cool. Well, now you can just do that anytime you want in Saints Row 4. Well, I'm not going to play Saints yes. Row 4. Saints Row you, 4. You should play Saints Row 3 or 4. 
<laughs> yeah, everyone tries to convince me to play Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto, and it's just they're not just so fun. beautiful. What I'm do not, you mean? I don't want to play them for the fun. Like, I don't want to play them to use a giant dildo to kill people. Okay. I don't want to play them That's to fly bonus. cars. I just, I just like all this stuff that just doesn't sound. No, appealing the story to me. is actually really awesome, and it also makes fun of itself a lot, and it's really silly. Yeah, I know. You guys keep saying that. It's just not appealing to me. It's hard. I don't. I can't explain why. I just know every time I hear it, I, my mind turns off. So like when people talk about it, I don't pay attention. It's like okay, whatever. Wow. Uh, I don't even care. So if you guys want to talk to me about it, just know I'm not paying attention to what you're saying. Got it. <laughs> but if you write about it, I will read it. I'm gonna so, write about Saints Row. I do the third, read that. So stuff. be prepared. <laughs> I already uh, forced you to read one already. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't make me any more interested in the game. So. <laughs> And in your article was why it was cool, too. And I was just like, yeah, it doesn't sound cool to me. You Whatever. Know, you're going to wake up, and all of your games are going to be gone off your shelf, and it's just going to be replaced be with place with like five copies of And Saints. I will come beat down your door, <laughs> and I will take my all stuff All the Saints back. Rose, all the Grand Theft Autos. Um, all the Call of Duties. All, all the Call of Duties. <laughs> that would be the beautiful. will give the codes for the DLC. Uh, <laughs> yay. Oh, I forget. Did now Brandon? Did you talk about this at all? Did you give your answer about uh, replaying games? Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah okay. Sorry. For What's your effort. topic, Courtney? What's my topic? Backlog. <laughs> oh, exciting. This makes me sad. Um, yeah. So the reason this is my topic is because somebody asked this question or asked the question. It was Dennis again. He asked, uh, "How big is your backlog, and how will you manage to your backlog with the PlayStation Four and Xbox One?" I will just not buy one of the consoles. <laughs> Yeah, you are the Solved. cheap kid. Resolved. Yeah. Buy the five dollar games so that are on your backlog. You know? Yeah. Or borrow your friends. Yeah. And then get your save deleted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um God. okay. That's so, why I played Saints Row Three. Uh Jess, go ahead and answer this one for us. For um, you. My backlog is extremely long. Yeah, she wrote them all down. I wrote it. I tried my best to write them all down. Um, oh, I'm going to read them to you, but there's it's not too many. Oh, I thought... Oh, I all right. Thought, okay. So, Kingdoms of Alamor. Oh, uh, Amalur. Amalur, sorry. Yep. Bioshock 1, Bioshock 2, Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy 13 2, mm-hmm. all the Dragon Age games, oh, Devil yeah. May Cry 2, 3, and 4, mm-hmm. Batman Arkham Origins, because I played all the other Batmans, Borderlands 2, Nino Kuni, Half-Life 2, some Madden game because I haven't played since like 06 uh, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts um, whatever Kingdom Hearts games there are some Pokemon game because I'm not into P- Pokemon Pika. Po- blah, blah, blah. Um, The Last of Us because I'm too afraid and Mass Effect all of them Nice. That is a what? huge backlog. Why isn't Minecraft on that list? Because no Minecraft looks is like... It, is <laughs> is <that> that, <laughs> it's still not a thing to me. That's why. Is that real? <laughs> He's wearing a Minecraft shirt. It's still not a thing. You made that up. Oh, man. But uh, um, uh, how will I manage my backlog with the PS4 and XO, the Xbox One? I am poor. So probably not going to buy one yet, especially because... <laughs> Xbox One is expensive. <laughs> it's so expensive, I can't handle it. And plus, I thought about this earlier, and I was talking to someone, because I talk about video games all the time, and I was like, if we all get a PS4 on the podcast, mm-hmm. there's going to be no other perspective. Like, there's going to be no one on the Microsoft side oh, of Oh, well, things. I'm going to have an Xbox One. You're going to get it? Yeah, just I'm going to get it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to not, gonna just not own rich. all the next-gen consoles. Come on, <laughs> what about the Wii U? Hey, we're we're going to get into that when we have a question about it, so okay. hold off. But I plan on getting the Xbox One. Like, that's, I made up my mind. I want the PS4 for its cheapness, but mm-hmm. like I want the Xbox One just because I am a Microsoft fan. I will have the Xbox One next spring whenever Titanfall comes out. I'm so. just excited that if I ever get one of them, I'll still be able to play Destiny. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Destiny. Oh. Um, okay, so backlog, Brendan. What's yours Every, look like? Basically everything that came out in like the past two years that weren't Halo Four. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> how do you how do you think you're gonna make a dent in that? Are you gonna um, do anything to do it, make a dent in it? Well, I'm gonna go at sales at GameStop. I'm gonna go buy something that was like released two years ago. The next two years until I finally get up to this point. Until you catch up. Do you have yeah. a pro membership? Um, get a pro my membership. friend lets me borrow his card. Yeah, yeah. I was say, if, like if, they're like two dollars if you have a pro membership, like the older older games. Yep. Or you could do like I do and get the GameFly. Uh, GameFly. Yeah, I could invest in that. If I'll probably do that in summer when I have a lot of time. Yeah. Yep. And it's hard Xbox. to make time now, but I make time anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my backlog. 
Uh, not as big now as it once was. It's still got like, um, let's see, on my on my list of games over here, I have Valkyria Chronicles, um, Enchanted Arms, The Last Remnant, and a bunch of PS2 games. So it's not a really big backlog because if you read my PlayStation Love Story that I put up on the website last week, you'll see that I went through, I beat 27 games or 28 games this summer. I dedicated the entire summer to getting rid of my backlog so that I would be ready for the PlayStation 4 when it came out. So I didn't have a life. I didn't do a lot this summer other than play games. How is that any different from any other day? Shut up. (laughs) I'm busy, man. Come on. Um, But yeah, so I don't have a very big backlog anymore. That's how I'm going to handle it with the PlayStation 4 is I already handled it. I started months ago and started kicking ass on games and so I don't really have one left, but I, I mean, there's still going to be games. Like, for example, uh, next February, well, right now, uh, I have Assassin's Creed 4, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, Killzone, Shadowfall, and Knack, all for the PlayStation 4, and the PlayStation 4 is not even out. So I already have a backlog set from the next-gen console. And then next February, there are games coming out. Uh, Tells of Symphonia Chronicles, which has two games on it. Um, Assassin, not Assassin, sorry. Final Fantasy 13 Lightning Returns. Um, Thief, and uh, it's supposed to be Infamous Second Son also that month. And so that's four really, really good games that I have to play. And it's like, that's another time where I'm just going to have a stack of games just come in all at once. It's like, now I have to fight through all of these before the next one comes out, which the next one after that would be, like I said, I'm getting the Xbox One when Titanfall comes out, which is like March 11th or something. And so it's only a few weeks after February. I'm like, oh man, next year is going to be crazy. So yeah, that's how I handle them. Anyways, so that wraps up the topic of the week or topics of the week. Ooh. I keep saying topic. I don't know why. I don't know why. Move into the listener questions. Dennis asks us a lot of them. So in case we didn't get any, love you, Dennis. Dennis, Dennis is cool. He asks us, "Do you prefer physical di- or digital copies?" Jess. Physical. Brendan. Physical. Me physical too. I don't really care for digital. Amazing. I only get digital if there's like a big sale or something. Or an arcade game. Or an arcade game that I don't get. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He also asked, "Use games or what's your stance?" Brendan. Yes. Yeah, I was say, yeah. Two years later, and, and for five dollars, use games. Brendan's all about that. What about you, Jess? Mm, the majority of my games are used. Uh, the majority of my games are new. Now they used to be used. Um, I used to only buy used games, and because it, it was, I was now. like, you guys, I was like, you know. Uh, I just, I don't have the money for it, you know, I don't want to spend it, I'll just wait until it goes on sale for something. And now I buy everything new because I want to support the people I enjoy the games from, and so it's like, you know, I want the $60 to go to them. I don't want it to go to some other crap place, you know? And so I buy the games I'm really excited about, but the thing is, is that I only buy games that I know I really, really want. And so if there's a game that I'm kind of iffy about, I won't buy that game. I will rent it. I will get it from Gamefly. Like, um... Heavy Rain, you know? I mean, it's several years old. I could have bought it, you know? I could have bought it new, or I could have rented it, or not rented it. I could have bought it used somewhere, but I was just like, eh, it's not a game I can see myself playing multiple times or anything, and so I'm just going to rent it. So that's 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 what I think about it. Okay, so, the Wii U thing. Mm. Let's get to that. There are two questions re- involving the Wii U. One of them is, uh, will the Wii U catch a break after Christmas with games coming out? I think, yeah. I think yeah. it'll finally start to... What do you mean by catch a break? Um, it's sucked so far. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> there are okay. no games, no games that people are interested in, anything like that. And so it's, it's, people are expecting the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One to sell more units within the first month of sales than the Wii U has its entire lifetime so far. Okay. So oh. that's saying something. I mean, yeah. the Wii itself... Um, breached 100 million copies. Yeah, but the Wii was good for the first few years. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it had it, it had a casual gamer market. You know, grandmas yeah. and stuff wanted it because they, they wanted to play Wii Sports and homes. stuff. And so it sold a freaking balls ton, especially since it was cheap. It was cheaper than everything else. Well, not at the beginning, but I think it was like $300 on release day, which wasn't bad. Um, if it has new games coming out, then yeah, yeah, it, sh- it should. Especially popular ones. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like Donkey Kong, I think, is coming out, and Super Smash Bros., and, and Mario, Mario 3D World. Yeah, there's all kinds of games coming yeah. out. Yeah. 
even though they're rehashes of old games over and over. Go, and they're Nintendo, good games. Go. <laughs> go. Yeah, they are good games, but still, it's just like putting out the same freaking game. I've never played a Nintendo game that I did not enjoy. I can't say that, but I will say that I have enjoyed most of them. Um, the other question, though, is from Lou uh, and or about the Wii U. He says, uh, is, is the Wii U considered next-gen? I think so. I think so, yeah. Okay, see, um, I can see how people would say no to this question yeah. because it doesn't stand up to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. But the basic idea of next gen is the next generation of that console. And the Wii was the, the last one, and then the Wii U is the next one. And so it doesn't have to be superior in every way yeah. and be awesome and crazy and new and futuristic. It doesn't have to be that to be next gen. It's just got to be the next generation of the Nintendo console, which technically it's not next gen because it's out. So it's the current <laughs> gen. So well, it's not really that next gen, but it is the newest generation of I Nintendo. I think you can say that because, like, PS3 was um, released like a year after the Xbox 360, mm -hmm. so yeah, the PS they're considered in the same generation. Yeah, exactly, but next gen is just talking about the next generation of that console. So like the next gen console for PlayStation is the PlayStation 4, but in in uh, uh, two days and four hours, 32 minutes and 36 seconds, it'll be the current gen. <laughs> Xbox One will be the only next gen console. Yep, then. for a week. All right. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so I don't know. It's it is considered next gen in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's people when they say that they just think of like they compare it to the PS4 and the Xbox One. They're like, yeah, it's not as good. Yeah, but and I agree, it's not as good. But it has its market. Yeah, and and it's it's another one that I said I'm going to own them all, and I will. I'm going to get a Wii U. I'm waiting for the games to come out, and once they do, I will get it. And it's like right now, the only game I want on it is Zelda. And, and that is a GameCube remake. And it's just like, I've played it on GameCube, so I will get it, but I'm going to wait till there's other games first. And I'm not going to get it just for a game I've already beat. I think that GameStop, that's what that's the game that they had on the demo. Probably. Yeah. They're bundling yeah, it with yeah. it also now, so that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so back to Dennis. He asks, uh, what's the hardest game you've, you've played? Dark Souls. I have not played that. I that's why I never touched that. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to play don't. it. Don't. <laughs> if you don't like hard games, do not play I'm it. I'm not going to play it. Um, Absolutely. So, it's as far as hard games. I've always played games that are playable. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, okay, so I would probably have to say one of the older Nintendo games because those are just freaking hard. But not hard because they made them hard. Hard because they were just hard. <laughs> like all old arcade games are freaking difficult. Yeah, really difficult. But it was because of technical constraints and stuff like that. Uh, but if I have if I have to pick a new game to be hard, it would be the Resistance franchise that I've just played. It is really freaking hard. Even if you play it on easy, I was playing <laughs> it on the easiest mode, and I died thousands of times. And oh I'm good gosh. at first-person shooters. Like, I don't say that I suck at those. I find I find that I am very good at first-person shooters because I am very good at multiplayer. I got into that game, and I got my ass kicked. Like, I kept dying over and over on the same levels, and I would get frustrated and throw the controller down and be like, <laughs> I can't play this. And then I'd pick it back up and be like, all right, I got to do this. It was ridiculous. I wonder if, like, the next-gen consoles, like... If they'll be able to detect when you throw your controller, because I know with the <laughs> Xbox 360, you're like, please reconnect your controller. I don't know if the Connect <laughs> is watching you at all times. <laughs> you can like, see your heartbeat, so yeah. it'll know. It'll just pause the game for you. You pull the controller up and throw it, and it says, "No, don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> I can't let you do that, Dave. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Siri. Oh man. Okay, so hardest game, Brendan? Can you pick up one? Pick one game that was hard. You could say Assassin's Creed 1 because it would make you jump off of buildings and die. Oh, yeah. I, I'd, pr I'd press, like, go straight forward and then jump off to the right. Yeah, I hate that. Or just, that. like, the transportation to get from town to town took, like, well, an once hour. You got, oh, yeah. Once you got halfway through, yeah, you like, could automatically transfer. Yeah, but... once you've gone through all the... But you've had to travel to them all first and yeah, when start you had to from... Trend, um... uh, like, go to Arsouf, you had to go through the entire thing. Oh, my gosh. That was horrible. He asked next, what's your favorite co-op game? Um, didn't I? We had a question about like what game you could play with your girlfriend or your yeah. girlfriend or boyfriend. I had a good good co op games there, like Mario, Mario Catherine. Party. What? Yeah. Catherine. Catherine. Catherine's not a good game to not play with your girlfriend, <laughs> and it's not a co op game either. Um, I'm gonna say uh, 
Mario, one of the Mario Party games. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, we do that where, like, every time, like, one of our friends come over, we play that every single time. We had hours of fun on it, mm-hmm. and it never got old. You could say any uh, first-person shooter. Those are fun yeah. to play co-op. Um, Borderlands, that's a good one. That's a fun co-op game. I'm trying to ease um, my roommates into gaming, and so I put in Fable 3. Mm. And so you can, there's a co-op mode with that, but you have like two dogs, and it's so weird. It's, it's, that is but, weird. Portal, but, <laughs> is, Portal <laughs> yeah. 2 is a great co-op game. Okay. If, if both of you have not played it before. No, I've never played, po- I've never played Portal, and I, don't, I don't actually don't even think I know anybody who's played Portal. Like personal friends or anything like that. I know it's popular. It's a, I've heard it's a really of course, good game. I bring it up and you go, you don't know anything about. Speaking it. of, well, portals. I I played the demo. You know, it's not like I've never even tried it or anything. It's just I've never bought, never played the game, never bought it, anything like that. It just it seemed kind of silly to me. It was like puzzles and going through portals and stuff. I was like, I don't want to pay full price for this kind of game. So, but I, I understand that it's good, and I understand that the voice acting and the story to it or whatever is excellent. So, well, a lot of it's just like um, Portal Two. You have to walk, um, play so cooperatively, mm-hmm. um, like you, and also having to get the timing down. That it's really fun, unless if you know the solution and your friend doesn't, and then it's really frustrating. Speaking of Portal Two, check out My Women Crush Wednesday. Oh yeah. Thing tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Well, it should be it'll be today, out right now. Since they're re- they're yeah. listening now. Yeah, check it out. Go to go to our website, middleofnowheregaming dot com, to check out the the Women Portal. Crush Wednesday uh, blog that's going up today. Um. Okay. So here is his his next question, which is my favorite of his questions, and he says, uh, "What are some games that you want sequels for that haven't been announced or aren't known to the public?" That's a good one. Uncharted Four. Oh, I can't oh, wait. No. I, I they're gonna uh, rumor is is that Naughty Dog is going to be announcing Uncharted Four be in, before the end of the year, and they're like pictures leaked and stuff. So I don't know if any of them are real, but uh, and then the next rumor is that apparently there's going to be a Sony has said that there's going to be a brand new game uh, announced on Thursday at the event, the PlayStation Four preview event, and so like people are speculating over whether or not it's Uncharted Four or if it's a new franchise or what it is. But it's just like it's a first party Sony game, and so it's like. Oh, I can't wait. I love Sony. <laughs> okay. And I love Uncharted, so that'll be cool. That's the one I'm thinking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Fable 4. Fable 4. You so think they're like going to announce Fable, Fable 4 with Fable Legends coming yeah. out? Um, I don't know. Well, hold on. Let me let me rephrase that. Do you think that they're going to do a Fable 4? I hope so. You hope so? I do, too. I like Fable, so it's not like... And, oh, and they're remaking Fable 1, aren't they? It's like Fable that's also, Anniversary. That's also one of the hopes for it. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so am I. I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be awesome to play in HD. Yeah. Um, Jess, do you have a sequel? I mean, the only one I could think about is one that we said a little bit of. Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I like, can't control my excitement. Well, that's already been announced. It doesn't so. matter. What's another game? Come on. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't really know. Like, I'm not a big... The next Assassin's Call Creed. The next Assassin's Creed. To Modern Warfare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one. You got me. Or um, Saints Row 5. Mm. Or I'm the sorry, fifth. did you say something? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Minecraft 2. No, oh, stop. Yeah, Minecraft 2. <laughs> Spherical now. Um, I guess another one I could say would be uh, The Last of Us 2. See, Not wearing a Last of Us t-shirt or anything right now. I'm too afraid to play that game. I'm literally too afraid to play that game. Oh, it's not scary. Okay, I can't take it. I take it back. It's, and it's scary. And be playing it at the same time. But like, okay, so it's, I was playing it the first time this summer, you know, like right when it was released, and and I heard that it was going to be scary and stuff like that, and so I was like hesitant on whether or not I wanted to play it alone or whether or not I wanted to play it in the dark. So I ended up playing it in the dark alone. <laughs> but, and so okay. like, there's these moments in the game where like everything's really tense. You're in a dark hallway, and there's freaking zombie things coming at you and stuff i don't want to go into all the details but but like there will be moments in that game that last for or moments situations in that game that last for like 30 45 minutes they're the scariest game you've ever played in your life and then you go like three hours where there's nothing scary you'll be out in the daylight you'll be fighting humans you know you'll run into some of the monsters in the day and it's just not scary anymore but then you'll go back into a dark situation where there's like 45 minutes to an hour to where it is the scariest thing you've ever played. And it's just like heart pounding. And then you go back into, you know, another three hours where it's not scary anymore. And so that's, I think they did really good like pacing for that. And, and it made it to be such a great game. So like, I was really afraid that I was going to just, you know, hate the game because of how scary it was. But then I found myself 
being in being out in the sunlight for two hours and be like, God, this is such a good game. And then, you know, ten minutes later, I'm like, Oh my God, what am I gonna do? Freaking that's, out. It's like stuff. playing Amnesia, but the whole way. That's another game I haven't played. Yeah, see, like, I, at the beginning <laughs> Sorry, of Brandon. Dark Souls, you get out in, like, a, a prison cell, and there's, like, skeletons and weird decomposed humans all over the place, yeah. and I turned the game off immediately, <laughs> and it took me, like, three months to, like, play it again, and I'm like, alright, you're gonna get through this. That's how I went with the first Bioshock. Turned it on first and started playing it, and I got scared to death, and I was like, I'm never playing this game. And <laughs> I, I put like, it down, and then I played Bioshock Infinite, and I loved it, and I was like, you know what? I need to go back and play the first two, and I so I like did. When I was seven, and I played Legend of Zelda and walked into the like, n- like future Hyrule, yeah, and, or like the Shadow Temple, and I turned it off. It's like I can't deal with this. <laughs> it's too scary. Yeah, I was the same way when I was a kid. Um, let's let's go to Steven's question. He asked. <laughs> Which gets settled first, the crisis in the Middle East or the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One debate? <laughs> I don't think the console debate will ever end. I don't think either of them will. <laughs> so. well, yeah. which, which crisis? Yeah, exactly. Every crisis. Um, no, I don't, no, there's not going to be. That's a good question, though. It's funny. I mean, I think it'll clear up a little bit after like they've been out and stuff. Like You'll <sighs> see like people playing both. It'll and, be like... settled by third-party people, like people who don't care. Well, the Xbox 360 and PS3 hasn't... like. It's, yet. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're still going back. There's fanboys for both sides, so it's not like it's going to be... It's, nobody's, it's never going to be settled. It's never going to be settled. Until they combine. Microsoft and Sony just <laughs> It's merge. like asking, when are they going to get rid of political parties? Exactly. <laughs> You're catching on. Wow, mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> okay. Um, Jess, read Lou's question. His first one. Oh, uh, what makes a system next-gen? We answered that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Answer this next question. Do you need to see graphical improvements, a new controller, gimmicks? And, that, and then the last one was the Wii U one. Okay, um, so do you do you need to see graphical improvements, a new controller, and gimmicks for it to be next gen? Nah, I don't not I really. Agree. I mean, that's a bonus, and like, I guess for some reason that's an expectation, but like, it doesn't have to be to exactly. Be next gen. And even when you look at the Wii U, the Wii U was you know improved on graphics. It's finally HD. It's an HD Wii, and it has a new controller. The the freaking whatever it's called. The Wii freaking TV thing you hold. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I don't really care because now we're getting to the point to where it's going to be hard to keep improving stuff other than like speeds and things yeah. like that and internet speed. Everything will be a hologram eventually. <laughs> well, well everything will be virtual reality. <laughs> well, it's expected that not the next gen, but the gen after that. There's not going to be a console anymore. It's just going to be like. I'll cloud everything, and so all you got to do is have a TV or some kind of a receptor thing that'll, that'll just make me sad. beam it into it. So that'll be weird. Um, okay. Dylan asks, which games do you believe say next-gen? Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. That was amazing. Um, why do you guys say that? It's beautiful. It is. Mostly it's... because I can't wait for it. Yeah, yeah that I can't too. either. It's going to be awesome. Um... I would say, like, uh, if I had to pick one, okay, I could say several, but if I had to pick one, it's The Witcher 3. Dear God. What's I that like, game? Oh, man. <laughs> my life is going to be over when that game comes out. I will tell you that now. I'm going to I'm gonna lock myself in here. I'm, I'm going to prepare. I'm going to buy a lot of food, <laughs> microwavable food, and a lot of pop, and maybe a little bit of water to keep myself hydrated healthily. Whatever. Just get one of those trash cans they sell for like Just hook zombie up attacks. To, like an IV drip. <laughs> um, that's that game looks awesome. Oh man, I can't even. Uh. Anyways, I'm gonna be writing about it soon, so you'll be able to see me fanboy out over that game. So look at the website. So <laughs> next question. Sorry, I breathed really hard in that. Um, Brendan, ask the next question. From Matteo on Facebook. I think it's Matteo. Matteo. Ma- Matteo. Yeah. I think it's Matteo. It's that's not like, Matteo. Matteo. <laughs> Sounds weird. Well, that's I just, yeah. that's just, just like on. saying what question. Will games become more or less popular? More. More. There's more. no way it's going to be less. I mean, that's simple. Yeah. I mean, I guess like we're kind of biased because we're already gamers, but like yeah. But you see that more and more gamers are coming into it. You know? And more commercials for games. Like, yeah. And it used to be the gaming was frowned upon. You know, the gaming culture or whatever, and it's blowing up. So. Whatever. It's kind. Of, it's now really weird if you haven't like played video games. Yeah, have you played Call of Duty? No. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> like, That's the game everybody's played. Or Grand Theft Auto. There Grand Theft Auto. Freaking conforming Beautiful. people. As I look mm. off into the distance. 
<laughs> What's his next question, Brendan? Uh, well, they turn into something on mobile devices like a smartphone. <laughs> we and had I a thing about not. that. Next question. <laughs> I hope not. We had a thing about that. About well, um, I like the implementation gamers. of like tablets. So the second screen stuff? Yeah, like with a new game case. I'm lost. <laughs> There's like a second of that, oh, wait. that was the first news yeah, blog Yeah, I was going to say, was that the thing you wrote about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you said game case. I was imagining, you know. Yeah, like a phone game case, case or something like, like that. What? Why does that yeah. have to do with a phone? What are you talking about? Okay, sorry. But, um, yeah, brain fart. Yeah. Um, okay, this next question is your favorite, uh, favorite game. Favorite game. Okay, you want to read the same time as me? I was just going to read it real quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I thought you said next question. I'm sorry. Okay, Brendan. What is your rotating favorite game this week? <laughs> um, This week I'm going to go with Ocarina of Time. Okay. Didn't you say that one like four weeks ago? Yeah. You yeah, but I... So you're repeating your I favorites now? I was looking now? at my Link statue this week, mm-hmm. and, I re- and I realized that this week is just going to be my favorite. Okay. Your Link statue. We, need to, we really need to keep track of which game you say is your favorite every week. Yeah. So well, I've had like four now. That's that's that would be a funny ongoing joke. Okay, Jess, what's yours? Can I say a different good one? Yeah, like you can Brendan? say one. No, what's that's only game? me. I'll pull that's a Brendan. Thing. I'm pulling a Brendan. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to say... This is for those of you who haven't listened to everyone, probably. Yeah. Because this question has been asked every episode, it seems like. All right. Um, Grand Theft Auto V. Let's say that. You suck. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Mine was going to be The Last of Us. I'm just going to say that one. Uh, which... Okay, last question. Who wants to read it? Nobody sign up? Nobody? Nobody? Nose goes? How long do you guys think you will be able to be playing video games? Will it be a lifetime long... Oh, wow. Okay, Will it yes. be a lifelong love, or will you outgrow it? <laughs> this is from Robbie on Facebook. Yeah. As long as I have money to buy games, I will be playing games. Um, it's definitely a, a lifetime or a lifelong love for me. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna find a way to play games. When I was broke, I used GameFly, or I made somebody pay for a game, or you know, I I found ways to play them. I will continue to find ways to play them. Uh, yeah, I think I'll continue. I want to make games. Like that's what I want to yeah. do. No, I want to. I want to be in the industry. With the expansion so. of like gaming and gaming culture, I think it'll be more prevalent. Like as long as we like, you know, live. Yep. Which we're all gonna die early, anyways, because we're we're crazy. Because of the, I'm gonna die later tonight because of all the sugar you put. In the, <laughs> <All> the, <coffee. laughs> the hidden amount of sugar. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Okay. So that wraps up our questions. Let's move into what are we playing right now, Brendan? Are you playing anything? Uh, I just finished Assassin's Creed One. Oh yeah, you said that already. Oh, yeah. So what are you playing now? Are you gonna play anything else? I'm still playing Atlantica. Oh yeah, that one. The one I, I don't know out. anything about. Mm. Jess, what are you playing? Assassin's Creed 4. Mm, I hate you. <sighs> yes. I'm I will be playing that in a it. matter of <laughs> two days, four hours, 16 minutes, and okay, I guess that's not right, because I would be getting it at midnight, and then I have to come home and install the update. Then you should so two days, sleep. in two days, <laughs> I will be playing you need to sleep more. that game. I what? Will... You need to sleep more. No, there's no sleeping at that, that night, no. Uh-uh. I, already I... Have, I already have work uh... off, and I'm not going to class that day. They, they know it already. I've, it's been it's been decided for months, so. Hopefully, yeah. I'll still have some more of Assassin's Creed to play in two days. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you will. It's a long <laughs> game. I'm just saying. I'm. Um, oh, so what am I playing? I just beat Resistance Three, so I'm playing nothing right now. I'm waiting until next gen, so I don't like. I don't know. I don't want to. I want to use the time left until the PS4 comes out to get all my homework done for next week so I don't have to do it this weekend and I can play as much as, as I want and prepare the blog posts and stuff. So oh, okay. I'm not playing anything right now, but the first game I will be playing is Assassin's Creed 4. That's probably bad because finals are coming up. Yeah, which is, uh, yeah, well, Thanksgiving break and stuff, so I'm going to use that and to get, like, what, get stuff done. Well, I only have one actual final, I believe, this semester. The rest of them are either papers or presentations or stuff, and so that stuff's already been written or prepared, or I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to get it done ahead of time. So I only have one test to prepare for, which isn't a big deal for me. Most of the time, I have, like, three. I have two, I believe. What classes? I'm afraid. Calculus and um, digital logic. Oh, those... Digital logic is going to kill me. I'm going to be dead. (laughs) Those sound bad. (laughs) Oh, man, I'm going to have to read the entire textbook because I, I just, like, it's just, uh, it's, my, it's a struggle. My final will be in uh, History of the Peoples of Kansas. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> you guys have no idea. That sounds terrible. Um, Brendan, do you know what finals you're going to have? Nope. 
No, nope. you don't look it that far ahead. Hasn't been announced. I'm sure it's in the syllabus. Yeah, well, yeah, but freshman. Yeah, I read that like once on the second day of class. <laughs> freshman, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, um, all right. Let's talk about the game releases this week. Um, on PlayStation Four, uh, you can basically find everything. So, mm. you, if you don't know what's coming out on PlayStation Four, then you're you're behind. What Battlefield rock have Four, you been under? yeah. Battlefield Four, Madden, Assassin's Creed, Injustice, Gods Among Us, Killzone. Uh, Resogun, DCU, oh, D, oh, which, oh sorry, DC, DC Universe Online. People probably don't know it as DCUO. Uh, Just Dance 2014, Need for Speed, Knack, uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Contrast, FIFA 14, Call of Duty Ghosts, NBA 2K14, NBA Live 14, Angry Birds, Star Wars, <laughs> Blacklight Retribution, Skylander Swap Force, Warframe, and others. There are more. Warframe is a special game. Is it? I played it on Steam when it was free. Mm-hmm. And it looks beautiful. Like I like the idea of it. Um, the graphics what is it? are great. Um, it's basically you are um, a mercenary. Mm-hmm. You are part of the Tenno, or you are a Tenno. Uh huh. That's what they call it. And basically, you just go around and shoot crap. Cool. So it's another shooter crap. Well, except it's. <laughs> I, I couldn't play it more than five minutes. Yeah. Just because um, the f- um, background blurs when you move, so it looks like you have your sensitivity on like fifteen. Oh. Out of well, 10. that could have been your PC. Your no, I. Because it was a Steam, wasn't it? Um, yeah, but I like played like DC Universe. Yeah, but DC Universe didn't have very good, or doesn't have very good uh, background stuff, doesn't it? And it's a and it's an MMO, so you can scale the graphics. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Because on World of Warcraft, you can It'll scale it different. to where it's not very good. Because if you have a bad computer, sorry, that's just me and my Whatever. MMO knowledge. Um, on PS3, uh, Injustice: Gods Among Us, Ratchet and Clank: Into the Nexus, XCOM: Clank. Enemy Within, Commander Edition. And the Bioshock Infinite downloadable content, Burial, Burial at Sea, Episode 1. On Vita, Injustice Gods Among Us, and Switch Galaxy Ultra. On Xbox, Brendan. Uh, Injustice Gods Among Us, Ultimate Edition, XCOM Enemy Within, Commander Edition, Bioshock Infinite, Burial at Sea, Episode 1, Deadfall Adventures, Contrast, and The Bridge. Exciting. In like a week, it'll be flipped. There will be like... A lot, a lot of, lot of Xbox, Xbox One, One. Yeah. and then, yeah, anyways. And nothing on PS4. Uh, on PC, Jess, what we got? Injustice, Gods Among Us, Bioshock Infinite, uh, DLC, Burial at Sea, Episode 1, World or War Planes. Talk a little louder. <laughs> oh, sorry. Blood Knights, Deadfall Adventures, Chivalry, Deadliest Warrior, Contrast, Baldur's Gate 2, and X Rebirth. Um, okay. Cool. A lot of repeating games on the consoles. Yeah. On the Wii U, we have Mario and Sonic at the S- Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games. Is that? I don't know how to pronounce that. Maybe I just mistyped it. Barbie Olympic? Dreamhouse Maybe, Party. It's Olympic Winter Games. Uh, yeah, and Barbie Dreamhouse Party. Yeah! Brandon, what's on the 3DS? Uh, Disney's Frozen, Olaf's Quest, Lego Friends, and Barbie Dreamhouse Party. The game you've been waiting for, right? Oh, Ever. It's, yeah, ever since it's, I finished Cooking Mama. I was going to say, it's the next Cooking Mama for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Okay, so that wraps up that, and we're going to move on to our housekeeping, the closing segment. Uh, again, we're going to repeat this for a few weeks. Uh, we've changed the recording schedule. We are not recording on Thursdays anymore. We are recording on Tuesdays, and we release on Wednesday morning if everything goes as planned. Uh, we always encourage you guys to email us with any questions or suggestions. Uh, our email is mong.podcast at gmail.com. Um, you can find us on our website, middleofnowheregaming.com. Uh, Jess, where can they find us on social media? You can search us on uh, Facebook. Just search Mong. And then on Twitter, we are at Mong Podcast. Uh, we remind you to check in on our website every week, or every day, actually, because we have blogs up uh, every day now. Uh, sometimes multiple blogs, like recently in the past two weeks, we've had up two or three per day, and it's always going to be a new yeah. story. Shout out to Lou and Holly for being awesome. About yeah. yeah, Lou and Holly, our, our uh, freelance writers, have been doing a kick-ass job putting up stuff, reviews and previews and, and all kinds of interesting blogs. So be sure and check in every day. We have all kinds of cool stuff going up. Uh, the podcast goes live every Wednesday. Find it on the website, or you can uh, subscribe to it on iTunes. Just look up Middle of Nowhere Gaming on iTunes. Uh, it'll download automatically if you subscribe. Um, you can find us all on Twitter. You can find me at Osborne underscore 2009. You can find Jess at... Jess Jayhawk. And Brendan at... Brendan Jester. Okay, and today... Uh, well, in the last two weeks, 
and this is the final week we're doing this. But we have another special ending. The last two weeks we've been counting down the weeks until next gen consoles with ending with a song uh, by Danny Wiesner and his wife, and we're going to do that again this week. Uh, it is a song called uh, Go Beyond, which people who don't follow Podcast Beyond, another gaming uh, podcast, will probably won't understand the song very much. But nonetheless, it's a kick-ass song. Um, it's it's cool, and uh, if you watch the music video, it has references back to Podcast Beyond. But anyways, it is by Danny Wiesner and his wife, Tori. Uh, they're known as two-player co-op. You can find them on iTunes, or you can find them on YouTube, or anything like that, and find their songs. Uh, this this is really cool. So everyone, thank you all for listening yet again, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Yeah, for the next uh, closing segment, Jess is going to sing the end. She's going to sing oh, the end. okay. Like, the end? What's the end? The ending. The ending? No, I thought you... Never mind. I thought the song was, like, the end. No. Oh, the end. no. The that's, end. that's, like, a dimension in Minecraft. Oh, yeah. my gosh. With your Minecraft references, I can't... <laughs> Beyond. Swag. Long. If I were young, I'd run without stars.
This is the day of all new days. It's up to us this time.